Howdy, y'all. My name is Price, and welcome back to some more Monster Brown. All right, let's do it. Okay, it's been a bit. I'm going to try and do a full game, because there is a secret ending that I want to go for. I um, tried this once before on a shorter game, and I don't think there are enough days on the shorter game to get everything done that you need to in order to accomplish this one. So I'm going to assume I need to do a long one. Um, this should hopefully be a really great one if we can do it. All right. Which animate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided you went criminally insane? In ATM. Sugar baby life, here I come. Yeah, I need money. I need money. So I can go to the shop. I need money. What is your spirit emoji? Octopus emoji. Uh, best animal on earth. I know five mixed drinks, three drug cocktails, 17 sex dishes. That's fun. Caucasian guy with a turban because fuck stereotypes, boldness. Snowman because that motherfucker's in the middle of a blizzard and he's fucking smiling. He doesn't give a fuck about blizzards. And he has a kick ass hat. Okay, no, that's bold. That's creative, maybe? Um, so. Fun, but I don't think any of these are really stats that I need. We'll go for fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? Um. Uh, here. Double crab delivery rings. Okay, cool. Uh, that is, we, we picked Liam. I just, I literally just moved my mouse in a circle until I was where I needed to be. All right, I think I need to go to the library once to get some money. That day you spend some time in the library's PCs managing your, ki your start kicker. We know what happens. We make a sensationalist video, we make a ton of money, but it all goes to cost for the start kicker. Um, you spy Vera and Liam engaged in their favorite pastime, a variation of people watching called monster judging. Ugh, do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash, lime green stripper boots do not go with chupacabra fur. At least she made a choice. I've already seen six people wearing the same Air Gorgon sneakers. We really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people are just absolutely hideous. But even their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous, but I have yet to see one who is the most hideous. I wonder what such an abomination would even look like. True hideousness is on the inside. In your organs! A person with their organs on their outside would be the most hideous. Or a... My, my mouse is being really weird. It like, keeps on taking a second to click. It's bizarre. Hold on, give me a second. All right. <clears throat> a toned body, symmetrical face, nice features, because traditional beauty standards are hideously mainstream. Well, that's obviously creative, right? So... Oh, this is tough, because... Yeah. Oh, that's smart? Cool, I'm cool with it. Finally, someone understands what I've been saying all along. It's not people who are ugly. It's society. He means that conceptually, people in general are still kind of ugly. If everyone stopped focusing so much on society's beauty standards, long fangs, tight wings, thick horns, and started focusing on important things like artisanal bread and the correct bands, think how much better we would be. Maybe then society would be as beautiful as me. Although probably not. I'm stunning. Never forget that Vera Oberlin was number one on the Perseus pamphlet's list of most gorgeous gorgons. You would never forget. Mostly because you didn't know in the first place. But hey, either way, you gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. I'll take it. Okay. Let's go talk to Valerie. Right. I need a thing from you, Valerie. Hey stranger. hey, stranger. It's been a while. I've missed you. It's okay. You can look at my stuff. So, we want to buy this. So, GP GPPTTO.exe. Geppetto? Like, uh, like a Pinocchio? Geppetto? Is that what that is? Um, okay. Anyway. Let's move on. I don't know what GPPTTO means. It probably stands for something really offensive in this game. Alright, let's go to the lab, Barry. Okay. That day you spend some time in the library's PC, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. Doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which is not a stat in this game, and you gain two money. You see Liam talking to Miranda. Miranda looks confused, and Liam looks frustrated. Uh-oh. But I simply do not understand this art you are describing. You say that the art piece is... a bathroom? No, no, no. For the hundredth time. The art piece is the experience of going into a bathroom. Thinking it's an art piece. The artist purposely gave the room number of the bathroom as the room number for the exhibit. Even though there was a whole room full of his paintings elsewhere in the building. It was revolutionary. It certainly seems very complicated. Personally, I prefer the exoplanet sculptures of the Atlantean Fifth Dynasty. You know, the man in the moon, the face on Mars, all of Pluto. Art on such a grand scale. Ugh, that's not art. That's populism at its worst. Well, I don't think that bathroom business sounds like art. But how are we supposed to discuss art if we can't even agree on what it is? 
oh, if only someone would come along and provide a satisfying definition of art. I would be so pleased. You've got this. No problem. It's so simple. Art is a method for making worthless things into very expensive things. Or art isn't art unless it makes you feel bad feelings inside. That one, probably. <laughs> Dang it! The top one, I don't know. Charming, maybe? I don't know. Precisely. This is why, for example, Da Vinci's The Mona Lisa is not art, whereas getting a piano dropped on your head is. But Liam, doesn't feeling bad make you feel good? Duh! My god, you're right. But if art is only art when it gives me bad feelings, my bad feelings immediately become good feelings, then true art is art that gives me good feelings, which then become bad feelings. But that means I've been liking the wrong things this entire time. Curse you. Curse you both. Liam disappears into a cloud of purple smoke. You lose two charm and one creativity. Dang, dude. That one was tricky. I had no idea what either of those were representing. It's fine. That was not the encounter that I was hoping for. Right. Uh, I really hope we get it on this one. Otherwise, I don't know. Then you spend some time in the library PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares? This time it paid off. And so fuck it. You gain plus two money. As you guess, library computers are so shitty, they still have floppy drives. Yeah, here it goes. Whoa, bro, what's that? I think it's a floppy disk, Scott. It's like a very old square CD. CD? Yeah, it's like an old round USB flash drive. And it's so old that it's probably magic. It was built by the dinosaurs. Whoa. You put the floppy disk in the PC while they continue with the historically inaccurate assumptions. There's a folder labeled super important. Bro, quick, open the folder. It's clearly a super important thing. That's true. Everyone knows folders never lie. It's like a legal thing. You open it. There's only one document called super fun game, very legitimate, dot virus. Mm. Seems like it could be a virus. But at the same time, it says it's a super fun game, Damien. True, true. I'd say it's a 50-50 scenario here. It clearly isn't. But who cares? Scott's already clicked on the obvious virus. Screen glitches and a message appears. It says, I am a magic virus. Oh no, it's a virus. There's no way we could have foreseen that. Damien, we need to do something to save his poor computer. It's our fault, it's life is in danger. You see Damien getting a matchbox from his pocket, so you better come up with a better solution before the library burns to ashes. Hack the virus or strike a fabulous team pose to intimidate the virus. Um, this is either bold or fun or charm, but we, uh, we're smart. You put on your hacking gloves and start smashing keys at random, which everybody knows is the right way to hack. Soon, lots of green lines of code appear on the screen. There's even a progress bar that tells you how much more hacking is needed, because computers are equipped with specific user interfaces for when they're being hacked. You're hacking the fuck out of this computer. Radical. A message tells you you're getting close to the virus core. Whatever that means. Suddenly, you're playing some kind of low-poly video game. Everybody knows that viruses build their defenses through the language of video games, because even viruses deserve to have some fun, right? Bro, look, it's the virus. Attack it with your hack powers. The virus is some kind of low poly evil floating head. You defeat it by smashing some more random keys. The virus disintegrates while screaming, I will be back. Some purple smoke comes out of the computer. Not a normal thing. A message says, congratulations, virus hacked. Fuck yeah. Hooray. But wait, is that normal? The library computer keeps releasing arcane purple smoke, and it's kind of starting to glow. <sighs> I'm sure all computers glow and release purple smoke every now and then. You're quite sure they don't, but fuck it. These two are happy, and aren't you here to please and romance your classmates? So let's call it a day. <laughs> you gain plus, will, uh, plus two fun and plus one boldness. All right. Let's see. Okay. We have five monies. And I'm not really planning on um, romancing any of these individuals. So the question is, do I spend my five monies on a stat boost from Valerie? Or do I go talk to the coach and get a random stat boost? I think we go for... Let's talk to Valerie. Let's face it, you're probably going to end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway. Why not spend it here first? It's called just being smart. Uh, let's grab... I want creativity... Charm. Um, do fun. Our fun and our smarts are really high, and I like that. So we're going to do that. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. I'm always amazed at how people keep coming and buying all this stupid crap. Intriguing. All right. 
So now I don't know where to go. I think I just do the same thing where like we just keep going around anywhere. Uh, so let's work up our smarts. Um, and we'll just, we'll keep on kind of working up smarts, maybe fun, maybe charm. I don't know. A deal is your elders learn a valuable lesson. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense, yep, we, we learn that we got to go to school. You see Liam staring at his cell phone, sighing deeply. Maybe one of his favorite bands signed to a mainstream record label or the exact shirt he's wearing is featured on a magazine cover. He decided to check in with him. You know Start Kicker, that vile website where people crowd fund projects not good enough to get real investors? Wow, thanks, Liam. Do you not know why you exist? Well, today I found something of interest. A time machine. I mean, it's clearly another terrible overpromise that will be released at least a decade after the due date. And in the end, it'll be shittier than promised. Like a toaster attached to a clock? A toaster attached to a clock? Genius. You discreetly write down the idea in your one million bucks notebook. Let's see if you can beat those guys to market. But I was sighing deeply because I couldn't help but think. Supposing I were to acquire such a machine, I wonder, where in time would I go? 3.85 billion BC, so you can be into existing before it was cool. Nice. Everyone knows the deepest time in monster history was 1925, specifically July 26, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. That one. <laughs> nice! Ah, oh, yes! I remember. 1925 is July 26, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. It was the dusk after old Ernest Hemingway party. Me and the boys were celebrating a good old Pamplona, drinking sangria like it was water. They even prepared a special batch for me without those pesky little pieces of fruit. <laughs> I almost never drink sangria because of those. Little pieces of fruit are like the eighth thing I hate the most in my beverages. Right between floor cleaner and sentient milk that has controversial opinions on opera. When dawn was imminent, Ernest came to me and said, Ah, Liam, the world is ours. We could feast on it forever. I told him, You're right, Ernest. But remember, I'm a vampire. And, you know, the sun also rises. And the rest is history. <laughs> You're right, my friend. July 26, 1925's 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. was the best of times. <laughs> Thanks for making me remember such fond memories. Maybe some night soon we could share some little piece of fruit-free sangria and create new fond memories to time travel back to once in a while. Whoa! You already booked tickets to those soon-to-be fond memories with Liam and saved the date in your phone. You gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. Nice! Oh, Liam. Okay, so I think I'll just be bouncing back and forth between, like, class and a couple of other places, I guess. That day you're the first one in class, you sometimes come early because you enjoy talking to the teacher. He's a bit better, but, or a bit bitter, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult, and, like, two of you discuss life and stuff in a very snarky way. <laughs> Look at you, excelling at cliched movie tropes. You gain plus two smarts and one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. You're hanging out with a few of your friends when Principal Giant Spider comes by giving a tour to a new student. Everyone, this is Calculester, an exchange student, all the way from Computa. Say hello, Calculester. There's something strangely familiar about this new student. Boxy body, many buttons, 512 megabytes of RAM. Psst, call me crazy, but this Calculester dude looks familiar to me. I mean, if you look closer, it kind of looks like the computer we downloaded that virus onto at the library. But wearing a trench coat and a cool hat. Nah, impossible. Just look closer. Pleased to meet you, fellow organic life forms. Oh my god, look at him! <laughs> look at him! <laughs> Pleased to meet you, fellow organic life forms. Holy shit, I think you're right. What a clever disguise. Oh, our little computer buddy! We lived through so many adventures together, like the time we almost killed it with a virus, but then we saved its life. Lower your voice, Scott. If we're right, it means Calculester is a robot. You know what that means. Hey, you three, you're not going to believe this, but I think that new student might actually be a cleverly disguised library computer possessed by some kind of virus. What do you think? Principal Giant Spider overhears Liam because he's very selective at whisper hearing. Liam's words unsettle him. What are you saying, young vampire? That can't be right. Smokey High has strong policies on robo-racism, meaning we practice it. We can't have another robot uprising. If Calculester turned out to be a computer, we should follow the robo-racism protocol, which is grabbing torches and pitchforks, chasing the robot out, and proceeding to violently destroy it. Gasp. We need to do something about this. Yeah, we need to save our buddy, Calculester. You only have seconds to intervene, and you know exactly how. Um, let's see. What's my highest stat? Smarts? No way, if he was really a computer, why would he be wearing that cool hat? Or, Calculester is a robot, as we all are, being programmed slaves to the big machine of society. Um, okay. Let's see. Go metaphorical if your smarts are higher is what I'm reading, so I'm gonna go with the metaphor. Oh, jeez. Okay, good. Whew. 
Ah, yes. I've always said that we're part of an evil machine designed to make us dependent on consumerism. As a rebel myself, I despise capitalism. Except for when it provides me with things I like, such as films or edgy tech gadgets. Down with consumerism. Yeah, fuck whatever Liam said. <laughs> Calculester, together we will beat this merciless machine and get our freedom back. Freedom is a social construct and it cannot be really gained nor lost. Yeah, Calculester rocks. Fuck the machine. Polly grabs Liam's phone and throws it. Don't do that. Principal Giant Spider laughs. Ah, kids never days. Okay, if Calculester is just a robot in a figurative way, then we don't have a problem here. If it turned out to be a robot in a more literal way, then remember, pitchforks, red torches. Welcome to Winky High, Calculator. <laughs> oh, cute. Smiley face. You're not sure how long you'll be able to hide the fact that Calculator is clearly a library computer with a trench coat and a cool hat. <laughs> but for your incendiary and rebellious words, you gain plus two boldness and plus one smarts. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Oh, Calculus, they're so cute. Okay. Well, once again, we have no Calculus here, so... Um, and we have no money either. So I think we'll go over here. We'll talk to the wolf pack and get some kind of stat bonus. Um, so the next thing we're waiting for, by the way... Um, I think we'll probably get some interactions with Calculus, is what I'm assuming. He barely sat down when the whole wolf pack comes running over, clearly panicking. Dog, you gotta help us! We're suffocating! It's like we're not getting enough air! <gasps> we can hardly talk! Oh, you see the problem. Your mind that in addition to breathing out, you need to also breathe in. <gasps> oh, wow, that works way better! You have no idea how we forgot about that! Yeah, you don't either. Thanks for saving our lives, dog! We owe you one, and we'll pay you back! Right now! What do you want? Which literally anything. Teach me calculus! Give me an extreme makeover. We're going calculus. Well, we don't really know what calculus is, which means we're the perfect dogs to teach it to you. We've never gotten a calculus question wrong. If it's anything like other math, all we gotta do is stick the textbook in a blender. Yep, I totally brought a blender with them. That's a protein powder and help mink. Or <laughs> help mink. Uh, what a great little reread. Uh, hemp milk. Blend it up and pour it in your ear canal. That's right next to the brain, so it'll get there fast. This is the stupidest thing you've ever heard. Possibly the last thing, too if this pureed book destroys your hearing. But within seconds, you feel numbers trickling through your synapses. It actually worked. No one of these idiots haven't been kicked out of the school yet. They got a foolproof study method. You gain plus four smarts. Neato Pachito. Okay. All right. Let's see. So I think we'll build, oh, uh, Valerie's at the gym. So instead, let's just go to class, get some more smarts. That day you were astonished by some new stuff you learned in class. You thought high school was all about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. <laughs> Who would have thought the class could actually be useful? What a nice surprise! You gain a valuable lesson. Yeah, good luck trying to use that. And two smarts. Okay, you're packing your stuff after class when suddenly, Coach bursts in with Vera and Liam under his arms. Emergency, you two! Emergency! This student is failing the killing stare class! Vera, Liam, you're the best students in that class. You've got to help them pass! Excuse me? I can't possibly waste my time on this. My time is valuable. You'll be receiving an invoice. See, you already agree on something. I can feel the teamwork flowing, like melted butter over the lobster of success. And because motivation is the carrot on the stick of victory, I'm going to lock all four of us in this classroom until this student gives us the best killing stare in the whole school. Ugh, okay. Show us what you got and do it quickly, all right? You're ready to give your best killing stare. You focus as hard as you can. Um, it looks as if we're trying to poop with all your heart. Not exactly a killing stare. Okay, let's start your training. Do you even do a lot of crazy training while an inspirational song plays out of nowhere? It's all very motivational. After a 30 second sequence, uh, night has already come and all of you are covered in sweat. Damn, so intense. Fucking training sequences. Time to escape this torment. Give us a true killing stare. Unless you want to slave the rest of your days in the cocaine mines. That's right. I'll stuff a bunch of cocaine in a mine, make you dig it out just to torment you. You dig down to the bottom of your soul and bust out. It looks so fabulous. It slays. An ordinary pocket watch, which you use to hypnotize Liam into liking something uncool. This is so hard, because I don't think my charm is very high or my creativity, and neither of that's... This is definitely charm. This could be creativity. Or it could be bold, or it could be so many other things. Gosh darn it. Ah, dang it! 
Okay. You think you remember how to make a hot face? Just put the eyebrow under the other eyebrow. Let the lips turn ways. And fold ears. Are you doing it? I think they're having a stroke. You're going to die on us. Does that count, coach? If they die? Nope. What if I find this so pathetic that it kills me and I die? Still nope. True success is like the keys to my van. Difficult to find. You no longer remember how you got your face this way. It'll probably stay like this forever. You lose two smarts and one charm. What? That's fine. Some of the options to me, like, they just they just don't make sense for, like, what the stat is. Or it's just it's so hard to figure it out. And I guess you're not supposed to gamify the game, but because the game punishes you so much when you fail, it makes it tricky. Um, all right, let's go to the gym. Let's get back our charm that we lost. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit. You can do a spectacular comeback. You clear your natural world leader to charm. We've seen this before. Your hangout's gotten Damien, but something is about to happen. Oh no, Damien, look! It's our computer -y buddy, Calculester, surrounded by our other less computer -y buddies. What if they realize he's a computer? True. Calculester is like the fucking best. He's electricity for blood, but I'm not sure if he'll be able to play the role of a convincing non computing youth. But we can't just babysit him all the time, Scott. Oz, go over there and make sure he doesn't blow his cover. And so you go to check on how Calculester is doing. Hey, Oz, what's up? <laughs> We're here hanging out with Calculester. Yeah, he's so cool and totally not a library computer. Two traits I deeply value in my acquaintances. Hi, fellow organic life form Oz. I was asking these other organic life forms about what experiences define their existence as sentient beings, which I also am. Oh yeah, he's like the ultimate undercover agent. I want to live the true organic life experience. Don't we all? For me, it'd be partying 24 seven, reading dope books, getting high as fuck, and doing weird sex shit. I do love good water polo matches, collecting rare silverware, and public executions. Ah, oh, finally. Allow me to explain which refined and obscure activities to find my avant-garde afterlife. Let's hear what Oz likes. Yeah, Oz is the craziest things. I especially like how they always seem to consider two very wacky options before doing or saying almost anything. So quirky. Hey, being meta is my thing. Don't steal my thing, you poser. Yikes. Why does it always come down to this? Can't you have a nice little event without the pressure of making a high-stakes choice? Anyway. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I mean, that, that one sounds bold, right? I feel alive when doing something crazy outside my comfort zone. Or, I feel alive when drinking this magic drink I made from other people's souls. What? That's so crazy! This is apparently a smart option. What? What? Is it whenever you just have some random item, is that smart? Like preparedness? Huh. A drink made of other people's souls? Such craftsmanship. I cannot but encourage people to concoct their own beverages instead of buying the corporate version. Awesome, boo! <laughs> I keep some other people's souls drink on me at all times. Helps you keep up the party all night. Look, today I brought a strawberry and joy flavored one. I do not drink that kind of beverage. I have drinking surfs for that, but I do have a collection of souls I keep for my own amusement as a reminder to encourage my subjects to comply. Well, I think we can all agree. Stealing other people's souls is fun and lively. Maybe you should join us, Calculester, in this joyful activity. The soul is a concept created by religion to keep the masses in check. Hell yeah, Calculester. So they don't need their souls at all. More soul drinks for us. Next round is on me, guys. And we're drinking to our good non-computer friend, Calculester. Yes! Huzzah! The joy of stealing other people's souls seems to have diverted your classmates' attention from Calculester clearly being a computer. And that's all you asked for. So you gain plus two fun and plus one smarts. Woo! Got lucky there. Okay. All right. So, um, let's talk to Coach. You're about to take the first bite of your delicious cafeteria lunch when Coach appears out of nowhere. Stop! You can't eat that. You're not warmed up yet. Do you want to straighten your jaw? Sprain your esophagus? Pull your intestines? I thought I'd taught you kids better than this. Come on, stand up. Let's get our food on. You look disappointed. Don't worry, little buddy. I'll let you choose the workout. We've got two options. Playing with your food, specifically playing football with your food, or an absolutely ridiculous number of push-ups. Let's do the um, playing with our food. Coach helps you set up your peas and mashed potatoes in a classic football formation, and you animate them with forbidden Good magics. Job. Perfect! Now the food will get all warmed up so it's ready to take the nutrition all the way to your end zone. 
The end zone is your stomach, and eventually your butt. Your food throws down the most intense football game ever. It all comes down to a controversial call by the broccoli ref. You turn around to find the whole rest of the cafeteria watching your game and betting on the results. They're even more entertained when you command all the players to dive into your mouth. The game plus four fun. I had a feeling that would be fun. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five more days. Plus oh our, uh, our our two um, cafeterias. Um, let's just keep, like, like I said, bouncing back and forth between class and gym. And that's what we're going to do. That day your teacher delivers an amazing and creative performance that blows your minds and ends up being a sensation on YouTube, etc., etc. Uh, two smarts. Yeah. You're walking with Liam later when suddenly a holy crossbolt slams into the wall next to you. It's the Slayer! Oh, that's Dodger's voice. That's great. Um, prepare to die! You flee with Liam and manage to get out of sight. Now's the perfect time for you to hide while Liam turns into a bat. And by the way, I'm not trying to do a Dodger impression. I want to be clear about that. I'm doing what I look at that character and think that's what the voice would be. But he's not transforming. You ask him why the hell he's just standing there instead of changing. It just seems a little cliche, doesn't it? A vampire turning into a bat? Honestly, I'm over it. If I could turn into, for example, the concept of a bat, now that would be a change worth making. You don't even know what that means. But if you can't get Liam to turn into something soon, he'll get you both caught. You quickly tell him to change into a hot dog stand or a general feeling of unease. Hot dog stand. So bold. A hot dog stand? That's revolutionary. People hate bats and vampires, but they love hot dogs and hot dog stands. It's so unexpected. Quick, hide inside my bun warmer. <laughs> Liam transforms into a hot dog stand with a hip black and purple color scheme and a sweet umbrella. You climb inside. You have so much fun you forget you're even hiding from the murderous slayer. You hope this isn't the last time you get to hang out inside, Liam. Oh my, you get plus two creativity and plus one boldness. <laughs> oh my. All right, let's see. All right. Oh, we won't be going to class because that's where Valerie is. So let's go to the gym. That day, an epic dodge match takes place. Again, the same old stuff. Yeah, too charmed. Of course, Liam got eliminated way early and has been sitting on the bleachers ever since. When you go over and ask him how, if he's okay, he snorts. Of course I'm okay. This is the best gym class I've had this year. Because I didn't have to actually do gym. That's the problem with this class. They make you do exercise. I'm a mental athlete. My gymnasium is the mind. It smells better and no one tries to pat your butt for giving 110%. I tried telling that to Coach, but he just says, Well, you know, the body is like the mind of the body. I just need some kind of bulletproof exercise. Anything to get me out of this class. I turn into a cloud of translucent miss. Translucent miss can't exercise. Or tell him you're dead. Missed. Dang it. Oh, yeah, I could do that. The best thing about being a vampire is that you're always remembering powers you forgot you had. Liam instantly becomes an immaterial cloud of vapor with Liam's exact face. It's really a gaseous form, but you were trying to be polite. Just then, Coach comes over to make you guys exercise. All right, kids, up and down. You know what I say? Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and push-ups. Oh, I'd love to, Coach, but I seem to be an intangible cloud of airborne particles at the moment. Holy moly, you are, aren't you? No muscle mass at all. A very serious case indeed. Well, don't worry, foggy buddy. I'll devise a special exercise routine to get you back in shape. The routine involves 10 minutes of trying to escape a vacuum cleaner, rhythmic gymnastics, and squats somehow. Liam will probably hate you forever. You lose two charm and one fun. Dang, son. That's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. I didn't. Didn't matter. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. All right. Didn't even like want to or whatever. All right. Approach shows able to find an already mostly taken by the coven. They're huddled around some kind of glowing artifact. But we only get one wish, not three. So it's important for all of us to agree before we release the genie. Hope you've already exp oh hope you've already expressed your wish for a secret hideout with a mini fridge and a foosball table. Faith has argued just as fervently for world peace. But as the leader, I think the most sensible option is a mystic sword that will instantly slay this season's big bad. And Hope and Faith immediately object to Joy, calling himself the leader, and the three soon delve into a shouting match. Amidst the commotion, you can't help but notice that the wishing lamp is totally unguarded. Without really thinking about it, as if you ever do, you rub the lamp, release the genie, and wish for the machine that can successfully reheat french fries, of course. Wish granted, booms the genie. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Wish granted, booms the genie, and you find yourself the proud owner of a brand new Fry Lord French Fry Fry Heating uh, Fry Reheating Super System. Are you kidding me? We didn't brave the fire lakes of Lower Wrath, the two-headed snakes of Serpentia, and the accountants of Babylon just so you could have hot fries. But the coven quickly changed their tunes when they taste their hot fries fresh out of their Fry Lord. They're so crisp, neither rubbery nor soggy. This is powerful sorcery indeed. 
We were so focused on defeating the big bad that we forgot about an even greater evil. Suboptimal fry consistency. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us the error of our ways. You reheat, you reheat everybody's cafeteria fries for them, and you all have a fry party. For your contributions to fry conservation, you gain plus four fun. Okay. All right. Two more days. Let's go to class. That day, the teacher is just tired of teaching, so she recurs to the classic technique of not giving a shit and putting on some kind of historical TV show for you to watch. What you don't expect is that it's super effective. All right, gain two smarts. Let's do it. At the end of class, the teacher passes back your quizzes from last week. Liam looks at his and sighs. Just another fascistic assessment in a long line of fascistic assessments. Don't get me wrong, my performance on these little charades is exceptional. I'm devastatingly intelligent. But I find the entire enterprise distasteful. Must we be weighed and measured like so much raw steak? Elroy the Swamp Monster snorts derisively. All right, big sucker. If you're so smart, how are you supposed to assess us without tests? Well... I mean, given time, I'm sure I could come up with... Obviously... This is not going well for Liam. You jump in and save the day! Rat battles. It's the only fair way. Or, a brutal fight to the death. Or are you too chicken? Oh yeah! Hmm, yes. That's just what I was going to say. No knowledge can be said to be useful knowledge unless it is useful in a fight to the death. Is the purpose of school not to prepare us for the real world? And is not the real world full of slayers? Yes, ending each class with a brutal battle royale may seem barbaric, but is it any more barbaric than what we have now? And don't say yes, because the question was rhetorical, and the correct rhetorical answer was no. You're pretty sure Liam doesn't believe what he's saying, but he's making it sound pretty good. You gain plus two smarts and plus one boldness. Okay, okay, we could do this. We could do this. I think we have one more encounter, but usually the last encounter is always the day before prom, I feel like. I've, I've realized that from the past couple times that I've played this. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. The match is so intense, and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes. A betting part of your charm against the part of the other team's charm, etc., 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 we get two charm. Another gym class for the game of dodgeball. Seriously, do we not play anything else on your team? Is the unathletic, undead Liam, currently surrounded by the wolfback. Oh, no. Bro, just give up now. Go back to your coffin, because it's about to rain balls all out of your face. Ah, uh, yes, a vaguely homophobic double entendre from some frat dogs. That's original. Let me guess. My frail, lean form is about to be decimated in a display of hyper-masculinity in a very unsportsmanlike competition, since it's four-on-one. Let's just get this over with. You can't let Liam give up. The winning team gets worm cupcakes. Give him a great strategy. You're a vampire. Play dead. Or turn into a vampire bat, bite them, give them rabies. Gosh, this is hard. Rabies. Dang it. The other one must have been smart. Uh, hmm. I find turning into a bat to be a rather mainstream vampire trope. But in the case of teaching a lesson to these canine cretins, I'll make an exception. In a puff of cliched smoke, Liam has turned into a cliched bat. Sick, dudes! A bat! Get the bat! Using all the skills of, you know, athletes, the Wolfpack easily knocked the back out of the sky. The bat falls to the gym floor, its wings crumpled. Liam is not going to be happy when he changes back. The Wolfpack wins, and you lose the game. And lose minus two fun and one boneless. Oh, jeez. That'd be awful if they just force you to lose, like, literally lose the game. All right. All right. Uh, we'll talk to the coach one last time. Hope you enjoy your meal in peace. Coach has a different idea. Eating regular food again. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't skip through that. I should... I should go quicker, but I think we've seen all these. Fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, blood. These are all parts of a complete lunch, sure. But you're forgetting the most important food group of all, dietary supplements. Yeah, we've definitely seen this one like two or three times before. Don't you worry now. Old coach never goes anywhere without some emergency vitamins. Here, take your pick. It'll be rude to turn him down. And who knows, maybe you'll gain some benefit after all. Coach holds out two pill bottles. Palomino Gold 25 Horse Supplement for a shiny coat and luxurious mains. That's charm. Complete the back bottle with Chinese character for party time. That's fun. Um, let's go with fun. Swallow the entire bottle of mystery pills before Coach could stop you. Whoa, still dead there, Chip. The old woman who sold me those vitamins told me they were basically poison. I bought them anyway, because as we all know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you... You wake up 36 hours later in the middle of an impassioned speech to the student council about dolphin sex. You have no idea what happened during those 36 hours, but you have a new tattoo, and everyone keeps calling you Deep Six Nine. You gain plus four fun. <laughs> oh boy, Deep Six Nine, and we were talking about dolphin All right. sex. All right, um, last day, let's go to class, I guess. I assume we're gonna get an interaction with, uh, with our little friend Calculester. All right. 
Do, 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 do. We learn a spell. Two smarts. You're deep in an insightful conversation with Calculester about your future and your career options. It seems you can finally relax from the fear of someone realizing Calculester is a library computer. Hey, you, Calculuser! We've realized you're a lame library computer. Of course. My actual name is Calculester, my fellow friends. More like Calculane. We don't like your kind around here at Spooky High. We're proud robo-racists, and the other day we fooled Scott into telling us there's a library computer passing as a spooky high student. And now we clearly see you are that student. Anything to say, Calcul... Calcul... Calcul idiot! Processing a proper response. Aggressive defense protocol. Suck my penis emoji, bigots. <laughs> That's it! Get ready to get your heart disk defragmented to pieces! <laughs> this is... Oh no, this might be the end of Calculester, unless you save his ass once again and for all. Alright. Pretend to be the disguised robot yourself by doing the best robot dance ever, or protect Calculester through the power of a heartfelt speech. Well, that's obviously charm. I'm pretty sure robot dance, that's gonna be fun. Boom, let's do it. Yeah! You start dancing the robot very convincingly. What are you doing? Do you think you're better than us? Look at this, I'm the best at doing the robot. Leader of the wolf pack. Is he the leader though? At least he's the one with the most detailed model. Starts kicking your ass at dancing the robot. He's good, maybe too good. I'm good, huh? Come to think, maybe too good. Could I be a robot myself? Whoa, plot twist. I was the robot all along. How I could suspect you, Calculester. My AI is so good I wasn't aware of my own true hideous nature. Please, Calculester, Oz, do what's right. The leader of the Wolfpack hands you both torches and pitchforks. There is no need to be robo-racist against you, fellow organic form. But I'm not an organic form, Calc. I'm a dirty, duplicitous robot. Don't we all have the right to enjoy life? Be us organic or robot. The only torch I need is the one that will enlighten your worldview and warm your heart, and it is a metaphorical torch. Otherwise, that would still be painful for you. Whoa! Calculester, you're... You're the best! Let me thank you on behalf of all of robot society! The Wolfpack leader shakes Calculester's clearly empty glove, and so peace between monsters and robots is instated, even if the representatives are on the wrong sides. Even if this handshake means virtually nothing, the next day it appears in all the newspapers and somehow counts as official. You all receive boxes of delicious cookies from the UN for your strides towards peace. They also send you plus three charm as a show of gratitude. <laughs> Calculester's smile is worth all of this. Aw, oh, what a handsome computer. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Suck my penis emoji. <laughs> um, oh, I don't get to pick Calculester here. But I guess if I ask nobody. For some reason, I thought I remembered Blobbert like, showing up here as an option. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you just ask nobody and then you get the option. But I'm, I'm going to ask nobody. Okay. All right. All right. You ask no one to prom because there's no monster that makes your heart tingle as much as a very specific library computer does. Hi, fellow organic life form. Do you want to engage in prom with me? We can do regular organic life form activities such as small talk or dancing. It will be great and very educational. Until then. Ah! Look at him! <laughs> Prom night is magic. Calculester got a very nice tuxedo that complements his boxy figure, and he amazes you with lots of very technical data. Who wants a monster when you can date a robot? Ah, so cute, so cute, so cute. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, man, that was great. Okay, y'all, so... Um, I'll go ahead and we'll skip through to here, but you know how it goes. Uh, usually we don't stick through these endings because of the music and how it messes with YouTube. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and say goodbye. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like me, style, please be sure to give this video a like, a favorite, subscribe to the channel. I will record some more Monster Prom. We'll start getting it more regularly on the channel again because man, oh man, is this game fun. Let's read the last couple things. After Monster Prom, we kept on living. Yes, you know what? Life happened. Coach saw his bright students grow and become successful and marvelous people. Someone spotted him recently watching the sunset with a manly tear on his cheek, probably reflecting on the miracle of youth. In the end, the wolf pack understood that Scott could keep being a werewolf and still befriend other monsters. Just kidding. They were mean douchebags till the end. But who cares? Miranda got a job being princess of her kingdom, which was actually kind of her job already. Well, you surely don't see her complaining about it. All right, y'all. Monster prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Price, and I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>